Finally, we construct exponential objects in the category of reflexive graphs. Recall that by Yoneda, there is an isomorphic copy of the category RG in the category of reflexive graphs. Observe that underline V cross W is isomorphic to W since underline V is the terminal reflexive graph. Therefore, the vertex set of Z to the W is a set of morphisms from W to Z. For example, let W be the reflexive graph with vertices A, B, and C and non-distinguished arcs alpha and beta, and Z to be the reflexive graph with three vertices 0, 1, 2, and the following arc set. Then underline A cross W is as follows, and precomposing by underline S cross W and underline T cross W gives us the inclusion of W into the columns of V sub S and V sub T respectively. Since a reflexive graph is a category without composition, you can think of reflexive graph arcs as natural transformations without the commuting conditions. The vertices of Z to the W are the reflexive graph morphisms. We will use brute force to determine which assignment of vertices lift to morphisms. There are 3 to the 3, or 27, different assignments on vertices from A, B, C to 0, 1, 2. To determine how many lifts each assignment gives us, we count how many assignments on arcs there are from alpha and beta to the arcs on Z. So for example, when A, B, and C are all taken to zero, alpha and beta may each be mapped to either of the two loops at zero. Hence, there are four choices of lifts for this assignment. They are given by sending both alpha and beta to omega, alpha to omega, and beta to the distinguished loop, which we represent here by an asterisk, and so on. It is then straightforward to complete this table. We sum up the fourth column to conclude that z to the w has 35 vertices. Hence, there are 35 morphisms from w to z. The arc, or arrow set, of z to the w is a set of reflexive graph morphisms from underline a cross w to z. And like we said before, we can think of an arc in the exponential as a natural transformation without the commuting condition. So we make a copy of underline A cross W where the morphism F is given in the left column and G in the right column. When F is any of the four morphisms which assign A, B, and C to zero, then G may assign A, B, and C to either zero or one, since there are arcs which have source at zero and target at zero or one in Z. If G is a morphism which assigns A, B to zero and C to one, then since there are two loops at zero, there are two choices for each of the following arcs, but there is only one choice for when the source is zero and the target is one, since there is only one arc with source at zero and target at one in Z. Therefore, in Z to the W, there are two to the fourth plus one, or 17, arcs with source F and target G. Since F was an arbitrary choice of one of the four morphisms which assigned a, B, and C all to zero, and G was one of the four choices of a morphism which sends A and B to zero and C to one, there are 17 arcs between each of the 16 choices of the pair F and G. Then we may use similar arguments to construct the entire arc set of the exponential object.